All right, everyone. Time for another GameStop video. Today was absolutely crazy again. Um, we saw the algo break in real time in multiple different ways. And obviously GameStop doing a share offering and Roaring Kitty's live stream. You know, this was probably one of the most insane days of ups and downs uh, I have seen in this GameStop saga so far. Um, so let's let's get into it. I'm gonna. Um, I'm already sharing my screen, so hopefully you can see this. Um, but okay, so last night, right? Uh, a bunch of calls were added, as as was, I covered in yesterday's video. Uh, the gamma ramp was building. We saw the price appreciation ripping all throughout the day and through after hours. We ran all the way up to sixty seven dollars, which was only two dollars away from where DFE would be technically a billionaire, and um. Then it pulled back slightly, and then this morning, early on, we were trading about flat at the sixty-one, you know, sixty-two dollar level. And then here came, you know, massive short attack. And then here we got the bombshell news that GameStop is offering seventy-five million shares of their Class A common stock. So they're going to be raising, you know, essentially um, probably three billion dollars at current market prices. Uh, three billion dollars of capital, and again, we don't have a specific line on what this is. Um, in this uh, prospectus that they filed, this amended prospectus, uh, there's a lot of disclaimers. Um, but one of them that's obviously key to note that we've covered before is that they're using this for general corp corporate purposes, which may include acquisitions and investments in a manner consistent with our investment policy. Basically, hinting that they could be acquiring capital for a large large acquisition of another company or merger. And what was interesting today is that Frontier Airlines uh, posted um, posted solid pause sales and posted images in solidarity with, with DFE. And so, you know, is there a potential merger there? Is GameStop going to acquire uh, an airline? Are they going to do BBBY? Are they going to rescue Blockbuster or Toys R Us? You know, we don't know. Um, at current market prices, both Blockbuster and Toys R Us would be very cheap. They could acquire multiple companies, not just those two. Um, but they definitely have enough enough uh, you know ammo in the chamber now to do a lot of very important things. And a lot of people, of course, came out you know as soon as this dropped, right? And the market tanked, and it appeared that some of the um, you know some of the momentum was taken out of the squeeze of the gamma ramp that's been happening that's been building up over the last week a lot of people said okay like this is it's all over right it's a rug pull you guys all are all idiots and as i've covered before most of this price action is not retail this is options dealers that are gamma hedging and this is you know the ftd cycle uh rolling up so you know we're waiting but you know in the next two weeks Right, we're going to see massive FTDs from both the May run up as well as uh, you know early June, June three, four, and five, um, and the amount of short volume they've had to do and FTD volume they've had to do to keep the price down. And one you know interesting uh, you know tinfoil I, I saw here on Twitter um, was from Reverse Draw for Uno. Uno. Um, I would say with confidence that GameStop just overcame an attempted takeover by short hedge funds who attempted a buy attack to appoint a board member. GameStop loads shares into Rifle, changes board rules to only allow Ryan Cohen or Larry Chang to call a board meeting. Because the reason why he says this is because in the recent filing, um, they basically had an anti-takeover provision. They were they were, you know, showing that only two members, right, Ryan Cohen and Larry Chang, can call a board meeting. And so it's it's a way for them to defend against a hostile takeover, which we saw in the 1980s. Right, it was very common for leveraged buyouts. They were called the corporate raiders. Right, Solomon Brothers, um, you know, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, a lot of these investment banks would take out a large amount of debt, buy a ton of shares in a company, try to take over the corporate board, and completely restructure the company. Now, sometimes they did this for the company's benefit, right? Occasionally they would, you know, uh, they found a company that was struggling and they would, they would um, you know, optimize it, they'd improve cash flow, they'd invest in R&D, but also, a lot of times they would just strip the company bare. They would sell all the assets, you know, default on the debt, and refuse to pay any pensions owed to employees, and just basically, you know, take it to the to the wood chipper, just cut it down. 
And so this is an interesting theory, right? And I think that this could be definitely a strategic move by Ryan Cohen um, to defend against uh, against a short hedge fund uh, that are trying to do a takeover, right? Because if 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 they're short and then they can buy enough shares to t- get a board seat and then internally poison the company and destroy the company from within, then that means that their short position can, you know, basically not ever be covered. They can destroy the company, get it delisted, and and get away scot free, right? Which we've seen this before. We saw this with the bust out schemes from Bain Capital. It's happened before. So I also wanted to cover. Okay, a lot of shenanigans have been going on today. So this is Red Stripe Thai, um, this uh, block trading platform I've been I've been looking at. We saw all these massive, massive block trades this morning, right at the open. Right, this one was at nine thirty and twenty five seconds. Um, 903,000 shares, 33 million, 34 million, 15 million, 15 million, 13, right? These are all huge, huge block trades by institutions. Um, and as pointed out by Dave Lauer, right, this is, and here's just another screenshot of the same thing. XYNS, this is a dark pool that functions out of the New York Stock Exchange. And so all these trades are dark pool trades, large block trades. And this XADF code, Right here, this is FINRA's alternative displaced facility. So this is basically the um, the brokerage that, uh, or I guess I shouldn't say brokerage, right? The, I guess, lit market, quote unquote, that FINRA uses to open uh, a stock. So Dave was saying, hey, like, even though these, this one especially looks big, um, this is just the opening um this is just the opening price. This is just you know them using this to list prices and to inform people what what the price should be, right? Um, and so that's what that's what Dave claimed. Again, I'm not an expert on these different you know exchange codes, so I'm I'm taking him from his for his word and from the the research I've done today that this is correct, right? Because he's right that this does look like a New York NYSE dark pool, and this other one does look like Finra's uh, alternative display facility. So. Uh, it seems accurate, um, but I'll I'll wait to reserve judgment until we have you know more information, obviously. But you know all day today, right? These block trades were coming in, um, both in terms of actual dark pools, which I don't know if you can see here. Uh, this is a you know dark pool trades. You can see this one at thirty six, sixty seven thousand shares. The rest were all through the NYSE, um, and these NYSE trades are all sweep trades, and sweep trades are basically when a trader. Uh, is trying to fire sell a block of shares and takes the highest bid across all exchanges and just hammers down the price. And so they're trying to unload a huge amount of shares and and bring them down um I mean bring down the price as fast as possible, right? And 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 get rid of this position as fast as possible at the best execution price. That's what the sweep these sweep trades are. And as Turd Ferg mentions, right, like this is 352 million in block sells, but options flow, and and I'll cover this as well later, options flow was largely positive today. So we saw, you know, the stock not, you know, it, it got hammered today, but it didn't go below the twenty dollar call wall that that DFE has built. Now, of course, we'd be remiss to to you know do this analysis without mentioning DFE's stream. He came on right, and I, again, I, I highly recommend you go watch this for yourself because it's absolutely hilarious. He comes out and and just shares his his opinion. He makes jokes. He starts the stream, you know, completely laid back and pretending like he's dead, and then comes back to life. Starts talking about, um, starts talking about the price. We see halts happen in real time uh, as he's streaming, and the price gets slammed down every time he halts. Um, but I think what is most important is he shows his position live on the stream, and you can see this right here. And sorry if it's a little grainy, but he has the five million shares and the hundred twenty thousand calls. He hasn't sold anything, and he's down two hundred and thirty-five million on the day. And this guy did not give a damn. He was just, you know, continuing to joke and meme and uh, make, you know, make light of the situation. I think he's clearly, you know, this this stream was evidence. Uh, some people were disappointed with what happened, but I think the stream is clearly evidence that he uh, is a long-term investor. He's not pump and dumping it. You know, if he was, he could have sold yesterday before the this filing um and or he could have sold today on stream if he wanted to or after the stream ended right and it doesn't appear like he's done that because the options flow activity doesn't show any large selling from his position from his strikes um 
but he you know he basically took it to the to the institutions showing them that you know i'm not a i'm not an i'm not a a bank i'm not a hedge fund i'm not a large institutional trader i am just a, a private investor who got extremely wealthy and made a very good play and i'm doubling down or i guess we should say like you know sex toppling down again right he's just bullish the stock and although a lot of a lot of people were disappointed with the stream i wasn't i thought it was really funny I thought it was really good. It, it, it accomplished everything we wanted to see, which was he's not controlled by institutions. He's just an individual retail investor who's trading, right? And, you know, this is that picture of him just laying there comatose. Really funny. Again, I, I highly suggest you watch the stream. But as we mentioned, right, during all this, you know, during his stream starting and, you know, for the majority of it, we saw halt after halt after halt. And you can see here, Right, these are the Nasdaq trading halts. Seventeen halts today, right? Just today, they pulled out all the stops, and a lot of these were happening during his stream. Right at noon, you can see, almost basically. Uh, let's see, his stream ended after about like you know an hour and a half. So basically, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine halts during his stream. Right. A huge amount, huge amount, or maybe this one. Too. I think this one too would be included because it didn't start until twenty minutes in. So yeah, so ten ten halts during the stream, like huge, and they halted, of course, all morning because they're they were trying to keep the price down. We saw price action every time these halts began. Price just got hammered through the floor, and then we reopened and it would start to recover, and then we get halted again and we get hammered down. And we saw this too, right? Here's another another screenshot. Here are the halts happening in real time, and here are the block trades that occur right during the halts that get filled, driving the price down, large block trades, price just gets hammered and hammered and hammered. And, um, you know, this happened all day. This is why they halted it 17 times. And it, it's it's insane because I, I've seen trading halts before, obviously, um, and they sometimes result in limit up or limit down, but it seems like almost every trading halt for GameStop is limit down and just brings the price further and further uh, down so that the shorts can load up on shares during these, you know, little intervals they have for breathing room. Another thing I really wanted to know, right? This was crazy. I think we broke the algo today in a major way. So, you know, on Red Stripe Tide, that platform I showed you, which was, it's, it's done by Simple Mike. Uh, he's a guy on Twitter. Go check him out. Go follow him. He's a great follow. Um, but on his platform, right, you can see we lined up the block trades with the stock price. And you can see, you know, green trades, red trades, they're hammering it down all day. Um, DFE stream actually starts right about here. So right before all these block trades start coming in to drive the price. Um, and we see these massive, massive whale teeth. Now, these don't show up on uh, trading views chart. We see, you know, obviously $47 down to 38 and then we close today at $28. So price is being driven down today. Um, but uh, right here, Around, you know, it's about around $40. We see the price rip all the way back up to 65, 68, right? These huge spikes, whale teeth. And uh, they don't occur. And some people tell me they don't occur on TradingView. And some people tell me that if I have the one second chart on TradingView, I can see it. I don't have TradingView Premium, so I cannot see that, unfortunately, but I'll take your word for it. And we've seen, you know, this is another guy who showed me, right? Here, I'll try to zoom in. Here is the live bid ask for GameStop. Someone someone interview, uh, videotaped it. You can see it in real time as the price rips to $63. 6305 and then comes back down. And then 6281 and then comes back down. <laughs> 6203 and then comes back down. Yeah. So we saw this happening in real time. We recorded it. This is massive. <laughs> Massive breaks in the algo. I mean, why are trades? These are supposedly dark pool trades, right? Um, these trades are getting filled at you know almost double the current market price. So all this confirms for us is right. Like the price is wrong. The you know there's serious problems with the algo, and this is even more uh, illustrated by this, right? Insane. Um, I don't know what platform this is, um, but you can just see these whale teeth and this is probably like the microsecond chart or picosecond chart um with the volume at the bottom but we just had whale teeth basically all day today and dfe stream starting right around here especially these whale teeth right this is huge just massive 
Um, and it was just happening all day. <laughs> all day they they really max the algo out again this this kind of behavior doesn't happen unless there's actually you know intense intense buy pressure on you know from the short side trying to cover and dark pool trades going through to acquire shares as fast as possible right because we're hitting this gamma ramp today expiration day another thing right like they went all out on the short volume so here we have the short volume short sale volume 45 46 million shares short right yeah 46 million so huge huge short volume here's the here's the peak from back in uh you know in may so we got up to 24 million and now this one was 48 even larger right basically double of what it was before they pulled out all the stops to to stop the price from rising and XRT was a similar story right we covered this yesterday but this is a retail ETF that includes GameStop it has around 400% short interest as of last filing. Uh, off exchange short volume, 76, basically 77%. 1 million shares today. Um, short interest is 20 million shares. There's a currently outstanding 5.7 million. So that's about roughly about 4, 400%, a little less than that, but you know, 390 something percent, 385. And the shares that were all drawn out yesterday were used today to just hammer the price down. We see this 400,000 shares appear. Um, on June 6th from 100 to 400. And then today they all get drained out back down to 75, 80,000. They use those shares, um, you know, sensibly, right, to short GameStop. And, uh, you know, the short sale ratio is insane. 76% short volume for the last few days. We don't have today's numbers out yet. This is as of June 6th, so as of market close yesterday. But um, it shows that they, they've been really, you know, pulling out all the stops to try to keep this thing from from running right insane insane um and then okay i want to share this too so on the option side right the algo is breaking the price is tanking and then ripping up and then tanking and ripping up and just volatility all day today 17 halts traders are still buying the 125 calls for june 28th as well as uh you know calls all across the spectrum for june 21st and june 14th um you know, we see here, I'll, I'll share the screen, uh, these images. So we see, you know, massive call buying coming through. These are the green bids or asks, sorry, um, which means purchases of of, of, um, of options. Uh, today, you know, 1 million in premium traded traded just on this expiration and this strike alone, 125, 628 calls. And so it looks like people are still adding and people are still trying to create this gamma ramp that's still building, right? Just because today... We suffered a quote unquote setback. Again, don't know how you want to want to categorize that because if, if GameStop and the board can get three billion dollars from you know options dealers, gamma hedging, naked naked options, then this is fine, right? Like this isn't a big deal. Like they're taking money from from the options dealers and the shorts, you you know <laughs> filling up their war chest, and the the gamma squeeze still is not over, right? There's still a huge amount of open interest on all these expirations. And we saw, like, and this is another expiration, right? So this is Bronx Viking pointing out $65 calls, expiring 614, right? They're just getting hammered. We're seeing people buying them left and right. Here's a huge whale or a huge, uh, you know, green candle from unusual whales, you know, showing this, you know, 1.7 million of premium traded uh, today. Open interest of, you know, 5,000 options. Um, you know, this is massive. And on the... You know, on the straddle side, right, if we look at the entire options chain, we can see June 21st. So just this expiration alone, there's like 40 million shares that have to be hedged. 40 million, right? Because we have 15 million here, you know, 5 million, um, 5 million here, or sorry, 500,000 here, right? Like we have, yeah, 2.2, 2.8, 2.8. Right, 2.2. Like we have all of these expires. If you add this all up, right, it's just massive amounts of shares. And if you, this doesn't even include the, the, um, the June 28th calls, because on the June 28th calls, we see similar activity, right? Less than the 21st, but we still see, right? 7,000 open interest uh, on these, well, these 128 calls, 1,600 open interest here. 2,000, 1,000, right? 1,400, 
right? People are still piling in. But the main gamma ramp appears to be forming on this June 21st expiry, right? This is, this is a lot of shares. And all these, even despite the bad quote-unquote price action today, we're still in the money, right? This is still in the money. All of these, all these options, 15 million, right? 300,000, eight, you know, 890,000, like still in the money. We're still there. And so, you know, all these things are going to have to be hedged uh, if we don't, <laughs> if we don't want to have a repeat of this week. So that's basically all for you guys, right? We have been seeing, you know, massive algo moves today. We saw whale teeth just going through the roof, just absolute insanity. And we saw GameStop file to, to sell 75 million shares, which can raise billions and billions of dollars of capital, which they can use to acquire or merge with another company. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. And my assumption is that they might make a move just within the next few weeks. Um, I also should mention GameStop released earnings early uh, today on Friday. Um, I won't go over that in this video. It's it will take time for me to dig through everything and figure out what's going to happen. I might do Twitter spaces about it um, to discuss what, what exactly happened. But if you want to uh, you know, learn more about financials of, of GameStop, I highly recommend following Running With Bears with a Z on the, on the, on the instead of the S under the Bears because he does really good analysis and we'll probably bring him up on Twitter spaces uh, to talk about the financials and like the actual technicals of, of the GameStop uh, income statement and balance sheet. So. Yeah, that's it. We that's all we have for today, right? Algo breaks and uh definitely multiple things break and the shorts, you know, basically have shorted the shit out of this thing and now are even more underwater than they ever were before. And so we're gonna have to wait and see, right, how this saga ends. So awesome. That's it. That's all I have for you guys today. Uh thanks again for watching. Um if you like the video, please, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'll be putting out more videos like this. Like I said, I'm going to be more consistent in putting out uh, content around macroeconomics, finance, GameStop, you know, financial crises in general, right? What's happening with the markets, the problems that are occurring. So I'll be doing that. So if you want to stay posted on that, you know, please subscribe and, and throw a like on this video. I'd, I really appreciate it. Uh, that's all I have for today. You know, have a good weekend, everyone. Enjoy this three-day weekend. Uh, and we'll see you on Market Open on Monday. All right. Bye.